In today's video, we'll discuss Josh Giddy, and we'll even go over his career as a whole just to see how he transformed into one of the best young point guards in the NBA right now. So without further ado, let's get this started. In the 2020-2021 season, Josh Giddy played in the NBL and played for the Adelaide 36ers. In his rookie season, he averaged 11 points, 7 rebounds, and 7.5 and assists while shooting 42% from the field, 29% from three, 50% from the two-point range, and 69% from the free throw line. Although he put up solid numbers, his team finished the season 13-23. and 23. All wasn't bad, though, because he would win the Rookie of the Year award. And not only was he excited about that, but we're pretty sure his father was as well, since he just so happened to be a player and a coach in the NBL at one point as well. But the 18-year-old Australian kid had bigger goals in mind and had his sights fixed on entering the NBA draft. And he was an intriguing prospect. He's a true point guard at 6'8", and is an incredibly talented passer and facilitator. And while he was intriguing, we don't think any organization thought he was a franchise-altering player. Quite simply, he had too many faults. He was a bad three-point shooter, he wasn't the best dribbler, and he was far from a good defender. But despite all of that, the Oklahoma City Thunder made one of the most surprising draft picks of the 2021 draft and selected Josh Giddy with the sixth overall pick. Josh himself even said he wanted to land in OKC days before the draft, but still didn't expect them to pick him that early and now had his eyes on his summer league debut. Unfortunately for him, he suffered a bad ankle injury in his first summer league game just three minutes in. And while he did try to fight through the pain, he would ultimately end up playing just five minutes and the Thunder sat him for the rest of the summer. On October 20th, 2021, Josh Giddy had his NBA debut versus the Utah Jazz. Josh finished the game with 4 points, 3 assists, and 10 rebounds while shooting 28% from the field, and OKC would be defeated 107-86. In his second game versus the Houston Rockets, he played slightly better and finished the game with 6 points and 4 assists while shooting 33% from the field and 33% from 3. But ultimately, despite the improved performance, they were defeated yet again, losing 124-91. to In his next game versus the 76ers, he would have his best game yet, and maybe one of the best games of the season. Giddy finished the game with 19 points, 7 assists, 8 rebounds, and 4 steals while shooting 61% from the field and 50% from 3. And even though they lost again, things were now looking good to start his career. He finished his rookie season averaging 12 points, 7.8 rebounds, and 6 assists while shooting 41% from the field, 26% from 3, and 70% from the free throw line. While he did have a good rookie year, he still failed to finish top 6 in Rookie of the Year voting. Scotty Barnes, Evan Mobley, Kate Cunningham, Jalen Green, Franz Wagner, and Herb Jones were all in front of Giddy. But where those guys all played almost full seasons, Josh only played 54 games due to a hip injury. Still, that's a pretty good sized portion, and throughout those games, he led all rookies in assists, while also being second among rookies in rebounds, just behind Evan Mobley. And he was even fourth among all rookies in field goal percentage. And to cap his rookie season off, Giddy won the Western Conference Rookie of the Month every single month that he played in and four of the five months overall that season. We get it, he was injured, but the fact that he didn't even break the top five is ridiculous to say the least. And Josh spoke on this shortly after and said, quote, it was disappointing. I missed a lot of games, which I understand. It is what it is. But I don't want to dig too much into it. Looking back in five or 10 years, it's not going to bother me. So it sucks. It is disappointing, but we move on. Josh, however, was more focused on improving as a team considering the Thunder finished 14th in the West with a horrible 24-58 record. Josh said, quote, It was tough to sit there and watch. In the end, we ran out of games, but I'm healthy now, and we'll have a full offseason under my belt and get straight back into it next season. The NBA season is a long, long season. You can't understand it until you have experienced it as you play back-to-back -back games. You get into different cities at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. in the morning. It's a busy schedule. Josh now had to adapt quickly, just like any other rookie, especially now that he was approaching his sophomore season, which just so happens to be this current season. In the summer league, he would average 12 points, 6 rebounds, and 8.8 .8 assists in five games before OKC shut him down for the summer. On October 19th, he would face off against the Minnesota Timberwolves in his sophomore debut. While they did lose by seven points, his sophomore debut was miles better than his rookie debut. So it would seem a full offseason of NBA-level conditioning and development made significant improvement. He would show more of this improvement on October 22nd against the Denver Nuggets, scoring 19 points, 12 rebounds, and six assists along with a block and a steal. 
Currently, while the Thunder are in the bottom tier of the Western Conference, they're definitely moving in the right direction finally, especially with SGA playing at a near MVP level. As of right now, Giddy is averaging 14.8 points, 8 rebounds, and 5.4 assists while shooting 45% from the field and 32% from 3 on 3 attempts per game. Although he isn't averaging the same amount of assists as Tyrese Halliburton, CP3, Nikola Jokic, or LeBron, he's still just as elite of a passer as all of those players. And keep in mind, he's averaging 5 assists while sharing the ball with a possible MVP candidate. And also keep in mind the Thunder are ranked 22nd in 3 point percentage, so the fact that he even has 3 per game is pretty good. When it comes down to it, he's just a really intelligent point guard who has a feel for the game years beyond what he currently is. He can make any pass in the book, and one of his playmaking specialties is delivering cross-court passes with pinpoint accuracy, sort of in the same way that LeBron does it. They use their height to see over defenses before making the big decision. As a scorer is where he is really improving. He's shooting 60% on 5 attempts on shots within 5 feet from the basket, and 36% on 3.3 attempts on shots within 5 to 9 feet. He has done a great job at utilizing his height on the inside, and his ability to play at his own pace and rhythm allows him to sneak into the paint almost at will. He's even been steadily developing his floater, which is honestly looking pretty solid right now. And at his size, it's pretty difficult to block or contest it. And as his ability to get into the lane improves even more, he could be a serious scoring threat sooner rather than later. His handles are definitely coming along as well. This too will also enhance his ability to get past faster and more athletic defenders. As as far as three-point shooting goes, while he is only shooting 32%, you can tell Giddy has definitely been in the lab over the summer. His form looks way smoother, and his confidence is clearly climbing when launching from deep. He may not ever be a 37 or 38% shooter, but if he can stay around 34 to 35, that'll be more than fine for a player with his skill set. On catch and shoot threes, he's shooting 33% on 2.6 attempts per game. That isn't elite, but it's still pretty solid, and just for comparison, Lakers point guard Russell Westbrook is shooting 25% on catch and shoot threes on two attempts per game. We're not trying to slander Westbrook or anything like that, but it's worth noting just to give you some perspective by comparing two below average shooting point guards. For now, he'll be way more efficient in the lane, and when he decides to put his head down and drive, he showcases good footwork and moves. Plus, he's a lot more physical than people give him credit for, and the same thing goes for him on the defensive end. While he isn't a lockdown defender, he understands his assignments and is rarely out of position. And let's not forget, he is 6'8 and weighs around 215 pounds, and he really knows how to hound ball handlers and be physical. This probably stems from his time playing internationally, and he isn't afraid of contact. If he wants to get up in your chest, he absolutely will. Like we said, he isn't a lockdown defender by any means, and he definitely has trouble guarding faster, more athletic scorers. But he puts in the effort, which is all you can really ask for. He's a solid team defender, and his combination of game IQ, awareness, and feel allows him to be efficient at cutting off players and making it hard for opponents to score by using his size to contest. With time, more experience and added athleticism and strength will really up his defensive ability. All in all, Josh Giddy has all-star potential, no question there. He can pass, finish, and is showing progression as a defender, scorer, and shooter. Not to mention, he's one of the best rebounding guards in the NBA, and he's even ranked fourth among guards behind Josh Hart, Jason Tatum, and Luka Doncic. Hopefully this video gave you a little better understanding about just who exactly Josh Giddy is as a player and why OKC fans should be excited for the future. If you enjoyed this video and want more like it, feel free to recommend your ideas on the next player we should go over in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.